Hi. Hi, Kaveri. How are you? Good. How are you? Where's, I'm doing oh, well. Thank I, you for I'm asking. I'm sorry. I taped you off. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it so we were just having that conversation. It's either you're muted or you can't be seen. It's always one or the other. You know, you never, you never start out yeah. right. So, yeah, I always keep it taped up because I don't want other people to watch me. That's smart. I need to start doing that myself. Yeah, you know, it used to be that was like a conspiracy theory thing. And now it's just like, no, that is, that's part of the Accurate. culture. That's part of keeping yourself safe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. So crazy. It is. It is. Fortunate part of reality. So. Um, is that going to be your next documentary? Are you going to make a uh, documentary about <laughs> cyber cyber terrorism and cyber snoopers or what have you? Well, why not? You know, there were cell phones all over the village, too. Let's talk about that. We'll do it together. OK, let's talk about it. I I'm excited. Let's get into this. So my name is Brandon Jones. I am from LRM Online. I am here with Kabari Call. Is that the pronunciation of your last name? You did indeed. Yes, yes. You Thank, you. Thank you. Very excited. Thank you. Um, so we are here to talk about your film, The Bengali. It is a documentary about uh, Fatima, who is, I believe, a friend of yours. And she was going to the Bengali to find her roots, right? Um, one of the first things that I, I noted about this film was, speaking of your roots, there was a blurb from Henry Louis Gates about this film. And he said that in this documentary, Award-winning filmmaker Kaveri Call unfolds a fascinating story of the first South Asian male immigrants to the United States who married African-American women and made a home in the Black community. Um, one of the things that I know about Henry Louis Gates, just from observation, having seen his show, it seems like he has uh, revolutionized kind of the world of the at-home uh, genealogist. And so I was curious, did it mean anything? Or was it special at all to have him see your film and, and make comment on it? Well, you know, he has revolutionized uh, ancestry in the sense that it was always a yearning for people. Right. He legitimized it. And so absolutely for him to say that um, was a gift. It just meant yes. Someone is saying this is worthwhile. Do it. Good. And, and it absolutely is worthwhile. So the subject of your film, Fatima, uh, as I said, you guys were friends. Can you talk to me about um, how you all met and how you decided to go from friendship to this is the story that we think we should make a movie about? Well, you know, it's interesting. I have to admit, when I first met Fatima, and wow. that's the way she said her name, uh, when I first met Fatima, I thought I was meeting an African-American woman, just like the rest of the world thinks when they see her. It was only after a number of conversations that she said to me very hesitantly, you know, I have a grandfather from India. And I said, oh, really? And then she said, yeah, he came from somewhere near some, he came from Calcutta. I said, no, I'm from Calcutta. And it just rang bells, you know, that it was so unexpected. It came out of nowhere. And this is what I had been told all my life, that there were Indians who had come here before us and they weren't in the history books of this country. And the fact that they lived in the African-American community and were welcomed into that community that's not written, that's not spoken of. So I got very, very excited and interested. You know, as a filmmaker, I developed my projects over a period of time. So I started talking to her more about it. I talked to her family. I talked to others in that community that I found in New Orleans because I was interested in you know, the grandfathers have been gone a long time sure. and they came in the late 19th, early 20th century. And these families are now African-American Christian families. So what did this man mean to them? And what I discovered was this man meant a lot. You know, 
Fatima's aunts liked to dress up in saris. As young people, they made up plays about an India they imagined. Another woman told me about how her father used to make, uh, her grandfather used to make perfume and sell it in the market. And sometimes you earn $10 a day and $10 was a lot of money then. Wow. Yeah. So um, it was also the way they told it, the admiration and the legendary status of these men in their families that excited me and made me feel, oh, this could be a story that means a lot to many, many people. Sure. Um, and as you are developing the story as a documentarian, what is your, what's your goal? What's, what's your purpose? Are you, so I've heard people talk about truth. I've heard people talk about um, other aspects of things that they're trying to bring out of their subjects for you in this particular film. What were you trying to bring out? I was trying to bring out many things, you know, because uh, my work always has many layers. And my aspiration is that when the viewer looks at it, they don't get lost in the layers, but they extrapolate whichever layer has meaning for them. Sure. And I wanted to bring out lost history that should never have been lost. I wanted to bring out the fact that these men from India came with an enormous spirit of adventure and that they were welcomed into the African-American community, two communities that were supposed to not like each other. Sure. But that's not true. They set the foundation and we should learn from them. And I wanted to also take someone on a journey to find out about her roots. Of course, there's a filmic magic to the fact that an African-American woman goes to India mm -hmm. to look for her past. Um, but, you know, I think it's especially meaningful uh, to come together in that way because I know where I'm from and I know what a privilege that is and yeah. how much strength that's given me. And it's nice to be able to help someone else who's been denied those rights sure. to find a little bit of herself. And in terms of truth, you know, that's a different matter. Of course, there's a, a, a rock bottom truth, but everybody gets to tell their own story in their yeah. own way. Yeah. Um, it's some of the things you were just saying just now rang bells about, um, African-Americans in, in the diaspora, that feeling of, of longing and wanting to connect to some other history beyond what we all know, what we were all told in school about slavery. Um, and so that was, that felt like a triumph just for her to be able to make those connections. Um, you talked about legacy a little bit. And one of the things that stuck out to me, one of the layers of this film is that it starts out in kind of a tragedy, right? There is this a legacy that Hurricane Katrina gave us. And we are still living with it to this day, all of these years later. And I wanted to ask you, did that seem like a bittersweet thing that this thing that had taken so much from some people spurred you all on this journey at all? Totally, totally bittersweet. You know, when I first was going to New Orleans to look, explore how to make this film, I saw the immediate legacy of Katrina. Then as I developed the project and went back there again and again, I saw the lasting legacy of Katrina. It did not go away and it still has not. It was bittersweet in that that was when I said, you know, Fatima had been hesitant to go to India with reason because it's a wild journey. What are we going to find? Uh, but Katrina was in a way the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new one. Because it was, a, there was a terrible sense of loss in the whole family and in all of New Orleans. You could just feel it everywhere. But it also sparked the need to move forward 
to hang, you lose the immediate past, but you long for a past that you can hold on to in another sense. Right. Okay. Um, one of the things that struck me about this film was the fact that you, so you're the filmmaker, you're um, her friend, and you're also the translator on this film. How do you separate any of those parts of yourself or are you able to, to be able to just make this film? Well, I don't think you can totally separate, especially in a subject like this, which is so sure. close to my heart, let's be yeah. honest. Um, I think what happens is that um, I saw uh, when we started filming that there was a, someone, I had to be the person who facilitated in the sense of being the guide, the support, both in terms of language and culture and the way of life. And remember, we went beyond the big cities sure. where there it's easy to meet people who know Americans and African-Americans and have been here. So there were bigger challenges at hand. So I took my role seriously. I tried to just navigate in between because the people in the village related to me as someone who understood them. Right. And Fatima related to me as someone who understood her. And that was really what I bring to the film. The fact that I can be a bridge. So rather than letting it be a hindrance, I use that capacity to make the film happen. You talked about earlier, um, back in the past, these Indian men that came to New Orleans and they were welcomed into the community. As a bridge and what I observed, there was an enormous amount of distrust towards her. Um, as her friend, as the translator, was that difficult for you? And how were you... A was that something you anticipated? Well, you know, um, it wasn't always distrust. First, let me say they were always gracious and hospitable sure. towards her. I don't think that she was so aware of the distrust because they would tell it to me in asides. Right. And I think one thing for any viewer of this film is that they have to be willing to walk in two pairs of shoes, not just one. Right. Uh, and one pair of shoes we understand very well because they're Fatima's shoes. She goes on an extremely meaningful quest. And, uh, you know, she herself is disappointed that he's not from the big city of Calcutta. But yeah. we think nothing of that. The Oxford she man. Herself is, is, yeah, exactly. She herself is not so happy at first about his being from a small village somewhere out there. But we understand that and accept that. We don't question it as something negative. When we got to the village, I saw that the villagers were staring at her. They had never seen someone from America before. When she first says she's from New Orleans, she has to explain it's in America. Right. And they've heard of America in very general terms. So anytime a stranger pops up out of nowhere in such a remote place, and again, remember, this is not urban India. This is a remote village. There will be curiosity. And there will be, you show up without any proof or any knowledge of your family history. You go, oh. You're from here? What does that mean? You know, they, at least they said, come sit down and eat. We'll, sh we'll cook food for you. But so that's, those are the other, that's the other pair of shoes that the viewer has to be willing to walk in um, and follow all the way through to the moment when Fatima herself is able to connect with the children. Yeah. They loved learning the second line. There were many children practicing it all over the village. We couldn't film them all. Yeah. And that kind of broke the ice with the mothers. And it's interesting because it's through the women that 
she's able to make inroads into the community, the laughter of the women, the talking about what spices they use. And that's what really does it. That's what builds trust in life, not some sort of larger discussion of, you know, do you know, uh, do you know anything about my past? Because they don't, right. you know, they don't know anything. And uh, I think the finding of further proof just helped. It was accidental. I'm so glad as a filmmaker, believe me, I needed that. And it happened. Um, so yeah. again, it's that understanding that I bring to the film, that there are two sides to any story. And when we go on a journey that's meaningful to us, we have to understand that we're journeying to somewhere where we may be strangers, where maybe they never saw anyone like us. It's only further into the film that they add into our time there that they realize she's African-American. They've never heard of an African-American. Yeah. So it's you have to leap into their reality to understand what's going on. They don't understand the, this uh, matter of going on this quest on the other side of the world. A beautiful quest, but their lives are practical. Their land is their way of life. They love their land. They till it. They farm it. So it's two different realities that I hope, you know, in the end, the viewer sees that they converge, that we can come together. Yeah. Um, this Was this a part of India that you had been to before? So I think there was an expectation that you all were going to go to Calcutta at first. And so when you found out that there was this other leg that you had to go on, was this a place that you had been to before? Well, no. no. You know, I'm from Calcutta, and I've been right. to the countryside outside Calcutta, but this was a village that's not on a map. Right. That nobody ever had ever heard of. The only way we found it was by my, my calling everyone I knew, saying, we have to find this village. Where is it? Where is it? You have a, You grew up in the countryside. Have you heard of it? You have a home in the countryside. Have you? And that's, and, you know, everyone was so enthusiastic because it's our history. Yeah. And they jumped on it. You have no idea. That could make a nice short film in itself. All the text messages flying all over the phone calls, you know, going, have you heard of a village called Kori? Where is it? We can't find it. We've got to find it. And so, no, I had never been there either. It's interior. And it's a self-contained community. They had exactly. never seen outsiders come in like that from another country. And no, most of us have never been there. Yeah, it is. It's hard for my brain to reckon just a place. I don't want to say fall off the map. It's not the right term, but just a place that is that difficult to find in this day and age, right? Like you, you pull out your phone, you type in a place and you just go there. And so it's hard for my brain to even having to send X number of text messages just to be able to find a place just is boggling to me. You know, I wonder about that since making this film. I wonder if there aren't a few places in America maybe that we don't know of that we could find. Because like you, I think if I have to find a place, you know, I Google it. I, yeah. I can get there. Yeah. So this yeah. was quite quite an adventure. Yeah. What, as a filmmaker, was there something that you made, or I'm sorry, that you learned making this feature? Well, one always learns a lot. Sure. You know, it takes you inside yourself. And it sits inside you and you live it, live and breathe it while you're making it. And then it just stays inside you for the rest of your life. That's the impact of a film. I learned uh, that there are real ties between our communities. They should be heard of and, uh, and noted. I don't want to use the word celebrated because we're always celebrating things without meaning it. Right. But 
a meaningful relationship between our communities. And I learned that, you know, people from different cultures can come together and not necessarily understand. They don't have to understand our quests and we don't have to understand that they're worried about their land. But we can still come together beyond that. And it's that larger understanding that I got out of this film. Sure. Yeah, I love that. I don't want to spoil the end of the film. What I hope in watching this film is that, as you just said, that there are communities that didn't necessarily know that they were connected that can, I hope, would see this film and think of it as a bridge, right? Again, not necessarily understanding, like you said, but just just a connection and that we're all connected in that way. And that's one of the things I really loved about the film. It brought that out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think that connection makes us feel good and makes us feel connected to each other here too. And that's important. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a very good film, ma'am. And I really hope that uh, again, folks see it and and draw that larger picture out. So thank you. I would like to thank you for sitting here and sharing that film with me as well as speaking with me about it. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking to you. Thank you, ma'am.